50 years ago, Skylab, four astronauts returned from record-breaking spaceflight. Let's talk about today's news in migration world. To get all updates, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. The longest spaceflight up to that time ended on Feb 8, 1974, when Skylab 4 astronauts Gerald P. Carr, Edward G. Gibson, and William R. Pogue splashed down in the Pacific Ocean after their 84-day mission aboard Skylab, America's first space station. During their stay, they carried out a challenging research program, including biomedical investigations on the effects of long-duration spaceflight on the human body, Earth observations using the Earth Resources Experiment Package, and solar observations with instruments mounted in the Apollo Telescope Mount ATM. To study newly discovered comet Kohoutek, scientists added cometary observations to the crew's already busy schedule, including adding a far ultraviolet camera to Skylab's instrument suite. The astronauts conducted four spacewalks, a then record for a single Earth orbital mission. Carr, Gibson, and Pogue spent the first week of February 1974 finishing up their experiments, preparing the station for uncrewed operations, and packing their command module, CM, with science samples and other items for return to Earth. On February 8, they closed all the hatches to Skylab and undocked their CM. Carr flew a complete loop around Skylab, the crew inspecting the station, noting the discoloration caused by solar irradiation. The sunshade installed by the Skylab 3 crew appeared to be in good condition. Finally, Carr fired the spacecraft's thrusters to separate from the station. Three and a half hours after undocking, they received the go for the deorbit burn and fired the service module's SM main engine. After 84 days in weightlessness, the burn felt like a kick in the pants to the astronauts. They separated the CM from the SM, but when Carr tried to reorient it with its heat shield forward for re-entry, nothing happened. Carr switched to a backup system and corrected the problem, caused by an inadvertent flipping of the wrong circuit breakers. Re-entry took place without incident. The two drogue parachutes opened at 24,000 feet to slow and stabilize the spacecraft, followed by the three main parachutes at 10,000 feet to slow the descent until splashdown. Splashdown of Skylab 4 took place 176 miles from San Diego and three miles from the prime recovery ship, the helicopter carrier USS New Orleans, LPH-11. The mission of 84 days, 1 hour, 16 minutes set a human spaceflight duration record for that time. Carr, Gibson, and Pogue had orbited the Earth 1, 2 of 14 times and traveled 70.5 million miles. The CM first assumed a stable 2 or apex down orientation in the water. Balloons at the top of the spacecraft inflated within minutes to right it to the stable 1 or apex up position. In mission control at NASA's Johnson Space Center, JSC in Houston, flight controllers met the splashdown with mixed feelings elation at the conclusion of the longest and highly successful mission and sadness at the end of the Skylab program with an upcoming prolonged hiatus in human space flights until the Apollo-Soyuz test project in July 1975. The three major television networks chose not to carry the splashdown live, the first American splashdown not covered live since the capability began with the Gemini 6 mission in 1965. The networks deemed the event not newsworthy. Within 40 minutes of splashdown, Recovery teams had placed an inflatable collar around the spacecraft and lifted it aboard the New Orleans. Seven minutes later, they had the hatch open, and flight surgeons quickly examined the three astronauts, declaring them to be healthy. Gibson, riding in the spacecraft's center seat, emerged first, followed by Pogue. Carr exited last, befitting his role as commander. They walked the few steps to a platform where they could sit and wave to the cheering sailors. A forklift picked up the entire platform with the astronauts, and transported them to the Skylab mobile medical facilities aboard the carrier. Extensive medical examinations of the astronauts continued throughout landing day while the carrier sailed toward San Diego. Medical exams revealed Carr, Gibson, and Pogue to have withstood the rigors of weightlessness better than the previous two Skylab crews despite having spent more time in space. They attributed this to their increased exercise regimen, including the use of the Thornton treadmill and better nutrition an assertion backed up by flight surgeons and scientists. While on board ship, they had limited contact with the staff, all of whom wore protective masks when in close proximity to the crew to maintain the strict post-flight medical quarantine. Carr, Gibson, and Pogue remained aboard the New Orleans until completion of the landing, plus two-day medical exams. The ship had arrived at North Island Naval Air Station in San Diego the morning of February 9, and the astronauts participated in a dockside welcoming ceremony while remaining on the carrier. The next day, the trio left the carrier and boarded a U.S. Air Force transport jet that flew them to Ellington Air Force Base in Houston. Upon deplaning at Ellington, Carr, Gibson, and Pogue reunited with their wives, Joanne, Julia, and Helen, respectively, 
whom they had not seen in three months. Director of JSE Christopher C. Kraft introduced them to the several hundred well-wishers who turned out to welcome the astronauts back to Houston. The astronauts soon returned to work at JSC for a series of debriefings about their mission. During a press conference on Feb 22, they showed a film of their experiences aboard Skylab and answered reporters' questions. During a visit to Texas on March 20th, President Richard M. Nixon stopped at JSC to award Carr, Gibson, and Pogue the Distinguished Service Medal in a ceremony attended by thousands of employees and visitors. Following splashdown, the USS New Orleans delivered the CM to San Diego, from where workers trucked it to its manufacturer, the Rockwell International Facility in Downey, California, for post-flight inspection. NASA transferred the Skylab 4CM to the National Air and Space Museum in 1975, where it went on display the following year when the Smithsonian Institution inaugurated its new building. After more than 40 years, 1976 to 2018, on display there, in 2020, the NASM loaned the spacecraft to the Oklahoma History Center in Oklahoma City. The Skylab 4CM held the record for the longest single flight for an American spacecraft for 47 years until Feb 7, 2021, when the Crew Dragon Resilience flying the SpaceX Crew-1 mission to the International Space Station broke it. To commemorate the event, the four-person crew of Crew-1 held a video conference with Gibson from the space station. The Skylab Rescue Vehicle's rocket, SA-209, and spacecraft, CSM-119, on launch pad 39B since Decora 3, 1973, returned to the vehicle assembly building on Feb 14, 1974. Workers destacked the vehicle, keeping the components in storage at KSC. Managers designated SA-209 and CSM-119 as the backup vehicle for the July 1975 Apollo-Soyuz test project. Engineers used the spacecraft to conduct lightning sensitivity testing in KSC's Manned Spacecraft Operations Building's High Bay in September 1974. Following ASTP, NASA retired both the rocket and spacecraft, eventually putting them on display. Visitors can view the SA-209 Saturn IB in the rocket garden of KSC's Visitor Center and the CSM-119 in the Apollo Saturn V Center at KSC. Two days before leaving Skylab, the Skylab 4 crew boosted the station into a higher 269 by 283 mile orbit, assuming it would remain in space until 1983. By then, NASA hoped that space shuttle astronauts could attach a rocket to the station to either boost it to a higher orbit or safely deorbit it over the Pacific Ocean. But delays in the shuttle program and higher than expected solar activity resulting in increased atmospheric drag on the station ultimately thwarted those plans. It became apparent that Skylab would re-enter in mid-1979, forcing NASA to devise plans to control its entry point as much as possible by adjusting the station's attitude to influence atmospheric drag. On July 11, 1979, during its 34th 981st orbit around the Earth, engineers in JSC's mission control sent the final command to Skylab to turn off its control moment gyros sending it into a slow tumble in an effort to ensure that Skylab would not re-enter over a populated area. Skylab's breakup resulted in most of the debris that survived re-entry falling into the Indian Ocean, with some pieces falling over sparsely populated areas of southern Western Australia. The scientific results returned during the 171 days of human occupancy aboard Skylab remain some of the most significant in the history of spaceflight. The medical studies on the astronauts represent the first comprehensive look at the human body's response to long-duration spaceflight. The ATM solar telescopes took more than 170,000 images for astronomers, while Earth scientists received 46,000 photographs. The Skylab program received many accolades. The U.S. Postal Service honored it by releasing a stamp in the program's honor on May 14, 1974, the one-year anniversary of Skylab's launch. The National Aviation Association awarded its prestigious Robert J. Collier Trophy to the nine Skylab astronauts and to Skylab Program Director William C. Schneider for proving beyond question the value of man in future explorations of space and the production of data of benefit to all the people on Earth. Vice President Gerald R. Ford presented the award on June 4, 1974. Possible plans for launching the Skylab backup flight unit never materialized due to budget constraints. That unit is on display at the Smithsonian Institution's National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. The training units of the various Skylab modules are on display at Space Center Houston, JSC's official visitor's center. As for the record for longest spaceflight, Skylab 4's 84-day mark held for four years, when Soviet cosmonauts Yuri V. Romanenko and Georgi M. Grechko surpassed it. 
spending 96 days aboard the Salyut 6 space station from December 1977 to March 1978. As an American record, it held up longer, broken by NASA astronaut Norman E. Thagard during his 115-day flight aboard the Russian space station Mir between March and July 1995. Operational lessons learned from Skylab proved invaluable for the Shuttle Mir and International Space Station programs. Thank you for watching the video. If the video was helpful, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel for the upcoming videos. See you in the next video.